In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit, amen. The Lord be with you and with your spirit. Today we're celebrating Wednesday of the third week of Lent. And as we gather in God's presence, let us take a moment to call to mind our sins and ask for God's healing. Lord Jesus, he healed a contrite. Lord, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. Christ Jesus, he came to call sinners. Christ, have mercy. Christ, have mercy. Lord Jesus, you plead for us at the right hand of the Father. Lord, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. May Almighty God have mercy on us. Forgive us our sins and bring us everlasting life. Let us pray. Grant, we pray, O Lord, that schooled through Lenten observance and nourished by your word through holy restraint, we may be devoted to you with all our hearts and be ever united in prayer. We ask this through our Lord Jesus Christ, your Son, who lives and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, one God forever and ever. A reading for the book of Deuteronomy. Moses spoke to the people and said, Now Israel, hear the statutes and decrees which I am teaching you to observe, that you may live and enter in and take possession of the land which the Lord, the God of your fathers, is giving you. Therefore I teach you the statutes and decrees, as the Lord my God has commanded me, that you may observe them in the land you are entering to occupy. Observe them carefully. For thus you will give evidence of your wisdom and intelligence to the nations who will hear of all these statutes and say, This great nation is tr a truly wise and intelligent people. For what great nation is there that has God so close to it as the Lord our God is to us whenever we call upon him? Or what great nation has statutes and decrees that are as just as this whole law which I am setting before you today? However, take care and be earnestly on your guard, not to forget the things which your own eyes have seen, nor let them slip from your memory as long as you live, but teach them to your children and to your children's children. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Praise the Lord, Jerusalem. Glorify the Lord, O Jerusalem. Praise your God, O Zion. For he has strengthened the bars of your gates. He has blessed your children within you. Praise the Lord Jerusalem. He sends forth his command to the earth, swiftly runs his word. He spreads snow like wool, frost he strews like ashes. Praise the Lord Jerusalem. He has proclaimed his word to Jacob, his statutes and his ordinances to Israel. He has not done thus for any other nation. His ordinances he has not made known to them. Praise the Lord Jerusalem. The Lord be with you and with your spirit. A reading from the Holy Gospel according to Matthew. Glory to you, O Lord. Jesus said to his disciples, Do not think that I have come to abolish the law or the prophets, I have come not to abolish, but to fulfill. Amen, I say to you, until heaven and earth pass away, not the small, smallest letter or the smallest part of a letter will pass from the law until all things have taken place. Therefore, whoever breaks one of these least of these commandments and teaches others to do so will be called least in the kingdom of heaven. But whoever obeys and teaches these commandments will be called greatest in the kingdom of heaven. The Gospel of the Lord. Praise to you, Lord Jesus Christ. I think it's hard for people in our culture to understand this Gospel passage because we have such a problematic view of the law. In our culture, we strive really hard thinking that the law is going to solve our problems and if we don't like something, we elect officials that we hope are going to change the law to solve the problem. And no doubt law has the capacity of changing how we function as a community, as a society. But it can't change who we are unless we have the heart to do so. 
In this gospel passage, Jesus is emphasizing the importance of the law, almost to the point that it sounds wrong, that no part of the law, not a letter, not the smallest part of the letter, is supposed to be ignored. It seems strange because certainly Jesus was conscious of how some of those laws were created by humans, how some of those laws were being misinterpreted, that they're problematic, and they didn't exactly fulfill to the nth degree, to the highest degree, the spirit of the law. So what is Jesus suggesting here? He's telling his disciples that they can't let go of the struggle. So all the struggles that we have in our culture are inevitable. We can't turn our back on it. We have to continue to try to improve the law, to do our best, and it's a process that's continually evolving, not always making positive steps. That's not going to go away. But I believe the reason why Jesus is saying this is because we're trying to use our limited human understanding to apply to something as simple as love, as simple and as complex as love. If we think about the law in terms of love, maybe Jesus' words make a bit more sense. If we love somebody, do we ever get to the point and say, well, that's close enough? If you love your child, do you love them 99.9% of the time, but one-tenth of the time you slap them around for no reason? No. Same with any relationship that you have that's loving, is yes, we're sinful, we don't do a perfect job of it, but if we say that we love the individual, we don't accept <clears throat> that 10% of error is okay. We always strive to do the best that we can. That's what love is. And so the same is true for the law. If you're going to obey the law, you're going to obey all the law. You're going to obey it as, but, as best you can all the time. And so even if we have to adjust the law because it's problematic, even if it doesn't perfectly handle a circumstance and we have to skip the letter of the law in order to support the spirit of the law, we're still trying to do our absolute best. So I think that Jesus' words might be problematic to our ears that are ingrained in the problems of law, but in reality, if we understood love in the way that Jesus does, he might be making perfect sense. Trusting in the mercy of our loving God, let us bring him our prayers. For the church, may God continue to bless and sanctify her, we pray. Lord, hear our prayer. For elected leaders, may the Lord help them, rejecting all forms of division and prejudice, we pray. Lord, hear our prayer. For those who suffer because of injustice, we pray. Lord, hear our prayer. For a community of faith, may God's law take root in our hearts and make us a bountiful harvest, we pray. Lord, hear our prayer. For Oscar and Evelyn Nesterwick, for whom this Mass is offered, and for all those who have died, may they soon come to find their resting place in God's kingdom, we pray. Lord, hear our prayer. Lord God, source of all wisdom, hear the prayers we bring before you for the salvation of the world. We ask this through Christ our Lord. Amen. Blessed are you, Lord God of all creation, for through your goodness we receive this bread we offer you. Fruit of the earth and work of human hands, it will become for us the bread of life. Blessed be God forever. Blessed are you, Lord God of all creation, for through your goodness we receive this wine we offer you. Fruit of the vine and work of human hands, it will become our spiritual drink. Blessed be God forever.
pray, my sisters and brothers, that my sacrifice and yours may be acceptable to God, the Almighty Father. May the Lord accept the sacrifice at your hands for the praise and glory of his name, for our good and the good of his holy church. Accept, O Lord, we pray, the prayers of your people, along with these sacrificial offerings, and defend those who celebrate your mysteries from every kind of danger through Christ our Lord. Amen. The Lord be with you and with your spirit. Lift up your hearts. We lift them up to the Lord. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is right and just. It is truly right and just, our duty and our salvation, always and everywhere to give you thanks, Lord, Holy Father, Almighty and Eternal God. For you will that our self-denial should give you thanks, humble our sinful pride, contribute to the feeding of the poor, and so help us to imitate you in your kindness. And so we glorify you with the countless angels, as with one voice of praise we acclaim. Holy, 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 Lord God of hosts, heaven and earth are full of your glory. Hosanna in the highest. Blessed is he who comes in the name of the Lord. Hosanna in the highest. You are indeed holy, O Lord, the font of all holiness. Make holy, therefore, these gifts we pray by sending down your spirit upon them like the dewfall, so that they may become for us the body and blood of our Lord Jesus Christ. At the time he was betrayed and entered willingly into his passion, he took bread and giving thanks, broke it and gave it to his disciples saying, take this all of you and eat of it, for this is my body, which will be given up for you. In a similar way, when supper was ended, he took the chalice and once more giving thanks, he gave it to his disciples saying, Take this, all of you, and drink from it, for this the chalice of my blood, the blood of the new and eternal covenant, which will be poured out for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins. Do this in memory of me. The mystery of faith. When we eat this bread and drink this cup, we proclaim your death, O Lord, until you come again. Therefore, as we celebrate the memorial of his death and resurrection, we offer you, Lord, the bread of life and the chalice of salvation, giving thanks that you have held us worthy to be in your presence and minister to you. Humbly we pray that partaking the body and blood of Christ, we may be gathered into one by the Holy Spirit. Remember, Lord, your church spread throughout the world and bring her to the fullness of charity together with Francis, our Pope, and Lawrence, our Bishop, and all the clergy. Remember also our brothers and sisters who have fallen asleep in the hope of the resurrection and all who have died in your mercy. Welcome them into light of your face. Have mercy on us all, we pray, that with the blessed Virgin Mary, Mother of God, with blessed Joseph, her spouse, with the blessed apostles and all the saints who have pleased you throughout the ages, we may merit to be co-heirs to eternal life and we praise and glorify you through your Son, Jesus Christ. Through him and with him and in him, O God, Almighty Father, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, all glory and honor is yours forever and ever. Amen. At the Savior's command, informed by divine teaching, we dare to say, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. Deliver us, Lord, we pray, from every evil. Graciously grant peace in our days, that by the help of your mercy, we may be always free from sin and safe from all distress, as wait the blessed hope and the coming of our Savior, Jesus Christ. For the kingdom, the power, and the glory are yours now and forever. Lord Jesus Christ, who said to your apostles, Peace I leave you, my peace I give you. Look not on our sins, but in the faith of your church, and graciously grant her peace and unity in accordance with your will, who lives and reigns forever and ever. Amen. The peace of the Lord be with you always and with your spirit. Lamb of God, you take away the sins of the world, have mercy on us. 
Lamb of God, you take away the sins of the world, have mercy on us. Lamb of God, you take away the sins of the world, grant us peace. Behold the Lamb of God. Behold him who takes away the sins of the world. Blessed are those called to the supper of the Lamb. Lord, I'm not worthy that you should enter under my roof, but only say the word and my soul shall be healed. Let us pray. May the heavenly banquet at which we have been fed sanctify us, O Lord, and cleansing us of all our errors, make us worthy of your promises from on high, through Christ our Lord. Amen. The Lord be with you and with your spirit. May Almighty God bless you, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Amen. This Mass is ended. Let us go in peace. Thanks be to God.